State is a research hub with a plethora of active publications from faculty. Our university is a cusp of innovation and opportunity. In light of Women's History Month, the ESA is proud to present the accomplished women making up our panel today who have established successful careers in finance, tech, and education. We are grateful for them to share, to share their wisdom, knowledge, and insight. That being said, we're going to jump right in. So please introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit more about your day-to-day -day work life. I'll start with you, Julia. Absolutely. So Julia Kosheleva Coates. I graduated from economics department in 2002, so a really long time ago. I currently, uh, I had most of my careers been with Wells Fargo Bank, and I currently manage a team of data scientists in uh, enterprise analytics team, so it's a very centrally located um, data science team. And my team is focused on developing predictive models for mostly for marketing, so doing a lot of predictive uh, prediction of behaviors, prediction of certain you know, purchases. Uh, we're using uh, traditional statistical techniques as well as machine learning techniques. I don't do uh, much coding day-to-day -day anymore. Most of my work involves uh, kind of strategy develop around, uh, development around where we want, what kind of models we want to build, how, they, how we would like them to integrate into the systems, customer-facing systems, uh, in uh, banker-facing systems. So it's uh, exciting work. It can be very challenging, but it's very exciting. Thank you. Uh, well, Hi, I'm Alai um, I'm the class of 2012 here. Um, so it took me a while. I just, you know, while I'm working on that, I came to this program because I wanted to help the, uh, my community. How do I bridge between the bridge and the poor? So when I came here, um, I, I learned to get the knowledge, and then when I graduated, um, I was like, what am I supposed to do with it? I have all these, but I don't, I don't, know, I don't know what to do with it. So, but I got really uh, the tool that I'm here that education is really one of the problems that really um, we can resolve or help uh, uh, poverty. So that's why I um, I went to uh, a doctor program under uh, educational leadership. So with that, um, I'll be defending my uh, dissertation in April. <laughs> so with that knowledge of education and, and uh, economic, I've been heavily now involved in the community. First of all. Um, I basically um, make sure that the community know we our own language. Second, we our own culture. Third is basically education. So from here, that's why I've been recorded here, everybody, so that just to promote high education um, in the remote communities that um, the uh, um, college education rates are 14 percent. It was one of the lowest uh, rates. So that's why I'm trying to uh, to get what I can. So. Um, and I just, um, the, the, um, I also just came from India and Nepal where the Kimono community from the world actually gathered there. So when I was there also, I was trying to get res resources, as we know that in, in economics, everything that we need, right? So I'm trying to get resources from every Kimono community from around the world to see what can we do to help each other, you know, um, survive or to help each other get out of poverty. So, um, so that's, that's, so economic for me is basically how can we resolve poverty issue within our community. That's why. So I think um, I got the tool, I got the knowledge. I'm just ready to go. I'm not there yet. Once I'm done with my dissertation, I'll take the full course and go for it. Thank you. Okay, um, so my name is Jimmy Sharpa. I'm not as accomplished as the two sitting here, no. but uh, I recently graduated. So after completing my econ BA in 2015. I then went to Berkeley for two years to get my master's in development. And during that time, so I had done six months in state government. Then I went ahead and worked with an NGO to design a randomized control trial. Um, then I also did some consulting for NGOs. And then I graduated. And I thought, okay, I'm going to join the foreign services, but looking at the, cl the political climate, I didn't feel like doing that, so then I went ahead and joined tech. Um, that was not at all what I had intended to do, but I went with like an open mind, and so yeah, so now I work in tech. Um, it's been just a few months that I've been working there, so I wouldn't say I have like a career in tech yet. Um, 
Salmon Logistics Operations Associate at Instacart, which is a grocery delivery company. Um, what I do, um, so I do a lot of problem solving. It's just really hard for me to describe what I do because there's just so much that needs to be done. Um, so the best way to talk about it is to say that I problem solve as um, issues occur. So I troubleshoot them, I adjust supply demand levels. I do a lot of, like, I use a lot of my Econ 1 stuff on, in there. Um, yeah. If anybody wants to know more about it. I'm doing UK, you can talk to me about that. I know that there is a job posting for a similar job on the Instacart website, so you can check that out. Uh, you have the dream job here for all of us, for our soon-to-be graduates, because Instacart is this startup tech company. I'm sure you have uh, certain benefits of perks of bringing your pets, and oh, yeah, yeah. so I think we all yeah, I, get, I, get, uh, I get free meals, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what we do. We don't get at Wells Fargo. <laughs> semi-quantitative role in a heavy quantitative um, environment kind of requires you to have the full gamut of skills. And when we hire, we actually look for people that not just can code, but also able to explain you know, what, what the analysis is telling us, basically connect the dots. Um, and it's, to be honest with you, it's quite difficult to find. In my experience, we see a lot of people have sort of heavily quantitative skills great coders, they can analyze any piece of data, structured and unstructured, but when it comes to explaining this to a non-quantitative audience, folks are struggling, right? So, or we have on the opposite end of the spectrum, where you have people that can speak about business, they understand the business, but they can't you know, do two plus two without making mistakes. So we definitely want to um, kind of get the breadth of skills to the best of your ability, and don't get me wrong, there's still going to be, you're going to be stronger on one side or the other, but, you know, play, play up your strength, but also, you know, make sure to work on some of your weaknesses if you're interested in career in uh, data analysis or data science. So, um, so yeah, I use my quantitative skills. Um, I do a little bit of coding. Um, I use definitely problem solving skills, um, system, system design skills. Communication skills, again, you have to talk to so many, but uh, Wells Fargo, as you can imagine, is a huge organization. And you, in order to get things done, you need to be able to build relationships, in some cases negotiate with people, um, and you have to, in order to get accomplished uh, whatever, whatever you're trying to do. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> I have two, kind of two jobs, if you will. Uh, my current job, basically, I'm a senior accounting manager at a private company. So I deal with a lot of numbers and a lot of data every day, day in, day, day, in, day out. Um, and um, my other job that I consider is more related to economics and my current uh, education is nonprofit, my community, how to walk my community. So I use that knowledge basically. Um, so from, from me, anything, anything that I that come to me, whether it's positive or negative, especially negative. I turn around, I appreciate it, feedback, I appreciate feedback from people, I'm looking, I'm seeking for feedback, especially the negative one, that's how it works, that's how it grows. So I, 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 I'm looking for that, so the way I grow, I, I basically just, just take the feedback, the good and the bad, and expand on it, learn from it, uh, and, and appreciate people that give, and, and um, that's what I use, um, it doesn't matter what skill, but the, the people skill. That, that, I think that's the most important to me. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah. And I agree with the people skill as well. Um, when I applied for my job at Instacart, I had no tech background at all. But when I walked in, they said, well, looking at your education background, it looks like, you know, you are, you'd definitely be able to pick up 
things very quickly because I had no I had no background in SQL, I had no tech background, but they were like, if you're willing to learn, then it's great. So I had to like I had to spend like half an hour demonstrating that I was willing to learn that I was a great um, I'd be a great team member, you know, I'd be fun, I'd help, I'm a great problem solver. Even the um what do you call it? Yeah, even the case challenge that I was given, like they didn't care about the system or whatever because I wasn't familiar with it. They were like, you can learn it, but tell me how you'd solve this problem. And so I was asked about this, there's a blizzard coming in Boston, like what are you going to do to prepare for it? And so I just had to talk about that. And yeah, I mean, you have like, you've studied economics, so you do have the quantitative background, the analytical background. So that's the signaling that you will do, right? That will probably get you through the door, but then after that, a lot of it is like the soft skills. Thank you. So my next question is kind of specific to Julia, um, since it relates to the banking industry. So in light of Women's History Month, the banking industry is notorious for its old boys club image. Is this characterization still relevant today, or is it changing? Uh, I can't speak for the entire industry. I can only speak, I guess, for Wells Fargo. And I also don't um, have specific statistics to share with you. But just uh, my perception of what I'm seeing, um, as you know, Wells Fargo had a, a turbulent couple of years, so there's a lot of change going on. And I definitely, I am observing that this image, at least for Wells Fargo, is changing. So you can definitely, and you see more um, strong women leaders are coming up, not just in the marketing department where you would sort of expect, right, but you see in data science, in uh, risk, in audit, uh, and there's very, there's a, a amazing women that are running certain very large international businesses uh, for the bank. So it is very encouraging to see that, and um, I, um, you know, I do look up to those women, and um, there are, I actually developed a mentorship relationship with some of those women, and I think it's very, it's been very beneficial for me to learn from them. And uh, yeah, and I think the, the culture is changing. Again, I'm not speaking for the entire industry, just just uh, Wells Fargo. So it's very encouraging to see the change. Certainly, that's a, that's a great start. <laughs> so. For my next question, it speaks more to our soon-to-be graduates who are evaluating what their next steps should be. They're evaluating further education. So can you give us, can you give them some advice on how to better prepare for graduate school? Oh, prepare for graduate school. Um, yeah, so I went straight after getting my bachelor's straight to graduate school. And obviously, I thank Professor Toby for that. She told me all about it about, you know, with schools to apply, what would be great for me, um, you should go to her. Um, but when I got, you know, my first day of graduate school, I was sitting with my cohort of 24 other people, and every one of them had, you know, what, at least a year. They'd been in the labor market, they knew what was going on, and I was just sitting there, um, like I'd just come out of college, I had no idea. Um, so I, I mean, I don't like regret, I, I'm still glad that I did this program in the time that I did it and everything. But I do feel like if you you need to spend at least a year or two in you know getting a job, getting some experience, understanding better if you know if that's what you want. Because then you end up saying, okay, I'm going to do international development, and you spend two years doing it, and then you try to go find a job, and then you don't like it, right? So you want to like um, understand better what the jobs entail. Um, get some experience and then actually the experience also helps you a lot in graduate school because then you can reflect on that experience and then it it leads to better like discussions with your classmates. I was not very, like I did not have a lot of like contributions to make, I'm just not an alumni friends. <laughs> but yeah, but <clears throat> I was just the opposite. Um, after a bachelor's degree, I was working, I couldn't move up. I was like, what, what am I going to do? I, I want to move up, but I just couldn't, like I stuck. So I'm like, okay, I'm going for a grad school. So I came back, like, what can I do? I want to be a manager, right? So I'm like, okay, MBA. So I came here for MBA, and then, yes, I then I got a manager position. Okay, that's cool. But, like, what do I, how come I'm not satisfied, you know? I'm like, my community is still suffering. I work, but what is life? So I'm like, what, what's there? What can I do? That's why I came, I came back, I work again. I came back to this master program um, in, uh, for um, economics. 
and to define tools. Um, what can I do to make my community better? And then I got the tool, and then after that, and then the tool that allowed me to even go further <laughs> to get a doctorate in, uh, in education, which um, I think that's really a perfect, that's no longer kind of route to get to where I am. Um, but the, the thing that, um, you know, uh, applying to grad school, you have to study for these tests. I'm not good at that. I cannot sit down and read those. I'm just like, they're just super boring for me. I just couldn't do it. So I just go raw. <laughs> I just go take the test raw. But what's effective for me, even uh, for an MBA, even a uh, master program, even my doctor program, you know what I do? I email them. I talk to them. I introduce them to, to uh, me to them. I just let them know me. So every chance I got in. So yes, talk to them, email them, get to know them. Doesn't matter how poor you grade or your test score, it doesn't matter. I didn't like to take the test. So my score was not good. <laughs> but I made it through all a different level. Yeah. Oh, and then another thing I wanted to add about graduate <coughs> school is um, when you apply, and then if you, when you see like the tuition, like don't be afraid to ask for money. Like, um, yeah, like when I went in, I did not ask. Um, so I had to like teach undergraduates, and then I got fee remission. But a lot of my, uh, a lot of my classmates ask for money, and I see a lot of my friends that now enter graduate school. They ask, so like make sure you ask for money. Like for scholarships and stuff, there's a lot of um, there are lots of resources available, and you should definitely at least ask. That's a great tip for me and Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> we can still do it. Yes. Okay. All right. And my last question here is: uh, any other advice? Anything else you want to tell us about what your experience, what was relevant, what helped you the most, and uh, kind of advice for all of us? For me, follow your passion. I think nothing is more exciting, more interesting, more fulfilling than following your dream, following your passion. Do what's good. Do what makes you feel good and good for the community. Yeah. Uh, anymore? Yeah. Uh, no. I, I, no. I, that could be anything, you know? Whatever your passion, whatever you, you know? There's so many things that you're interested in, right? But if something is in your heart, you follow it. I think that's the best. That's life. I would say be open. I mean, not like not jumping around like I did, but <laughs> definitely like just be open to all the opportunities that are out there. You never know. Like I never ever imagined that I would go work in a tech company. I always said, oh, I don't want to do that. Um, like I don't want to be with the techies. But well, there I am, right? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, just be open. Like that's how I did all the different. I did and now I know what I like, what I don't like. If I wanted to ever go back, I can do that. And I picked a role like operations, which I could then use in any sector that I wanted to, that I want to, sorry. So yeah, just be open as well as For me, I would say work hard and imagine yourself you're the go-getter. Go get it, you know? Yeah, just try different things, um, talk to different people, Get all the support you can get from your professors, from your mentors, uh, from alumni network. Just take advantage of all the support because that's there for you. And it's fascinating what, you know, relationships that I've built in the past, how, how they helped me in my career. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Your, your advice, your opinion has been so eye-opening for all of us. So thank you so much for sharing this. And uh, I'm just going to open the floor if any of you have any questions. Of course, please. <laughs> <laughs> you say ask questions. <laughs> so give us some help. How would we, for, for the whole panel, uh, any suggestions of, uh, about changing the program, changing the way we teach our classes, uh, curriculum, anything, any tips for this program to be better?
politics are gaining momentum. Uh, there's still, tr trust me, logistic regressions, linear regression, still bread and butter of what we do. But there's so much interest in uh, using those techniques. So I'm wondering if uh, you know that type of class could be introduced, or maybe um, no, no, leave econometrics alone. But maybe like a separate class, you know, that could talk about some of the data analysis that could be done in uh, non-parametric machine learning type of uh, using those type of techniques. Um, I'm also personally I have a lot of interest that I've developed in my graduate school experience around behavioral economics. So I know this is sort of like the next step uh, deviation from classical economics, but I think there's a lot happening in that area as well. So um, there's a lot of experimentation happening, especially in tech and you know, with all the online experimentation. So I think it's uh, um, studying that was also quite eye-opening, having the economics background and then, oh, but that's, that's how, how and why it does not work. It was absolutely fascinating to me, so maybe introducing some of that Seriously for me, because um, <laughs> I came here not know what to expect, so having a well-rounded, you know, all different class kind of helped me pick and choose what's interesting, what's not. Without having that variety, I wouldn't know which one's better than what. So I, I, I would keep a variety of different classes. Mm -hmm. um, nothing really much to add to me. Um, I felt like when I went to grad school, I felt like I had um, everything that I needed, and all the classes that I had taken were it worked out perfectly. In fact, having the econ background helped me a lot with my classmates because some of my classmates did not have that background. So um, it gave me actually like a one-off. Um, but yeah, but when I did when I went to Berkeley and then I started to teach undergrad, I could see how behavioral economics was huge. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that's when I was like, oh well, I wish I had taken the behavioral economics class. You know, I TA and I grade for the department, and I think it's when you start teaching students, mm -hmm. behavioral economics becomes very relevant because you start to observe these patterns, mm -hmm. and and I think uh, it, it is inherent with, with teaching that, that it just pops up. <laughs> Uh, actually, I'm not on the panel, but I, can I make a suggestion to Boris' point as well? <laughs> uh, I think that something that gets overlooked a little bit is like raw data processing. And I think in all sorts of sectors, you know, as we're moving into a digital era and more data is just becoming available, uh, we spend a lot of time focusing on modeling, but actually processing data for those models is really important because you can have the best parametric, best linear regression model, but if you have problems in your data, it doesn't matter, your results are going to be skewed. So I think, um, you know, specifically working with like SQL and maybe some database work would be really helpful for students, preparing them for jobs and um, really looking at data, not knowing, okay, this is a good data set I'm working with, it's I have no idea if this data set's good or bad and I need to actually go through it and process and try and determine um, if it's usable for whatever I'm working with. Can I add a comment? I just um, I completely agree, because right now I'm taking 830, which is the advanced methods and applications, and Dr. Mojik, that's what she loves to do, is just give us data and have us work with it and clean it up before we can even use it on a homework assignment. So I think that's really useful. So more classes like that. Yeah, yeah. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks once again. and. Uh Okay, so uh, blue and red team, congratulations, you got perfect scores. Yeah.